Laws affecting lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT people vary greatly by country or territory, encompassing everything from the legal recognition of same-sex marriage to the death penalty for homosexuality. Laws that affect LGBT people include, but are not limited to, the following Laws concerning the recognition of same-sex relationships, including same-sex marriage, civil unions, and domestic partnerships Laws concerning LGBT parenting, including adoption by LGBT people Anti-discrimination laws in employment, housing, education, public accommodations Anti-bullying legislation to protect LGBT children at school Hate crime laws imposing enhanced criminal penalties for prejudice-motivated violence against LGBT people. Bathroom bills affecting access to sex-segregated facilities by transgender people. Laws related to sexual orientation and military service. Laws concerning access to assisted reproductive technology. Sodomy laws that penalize consensual same-sex sexual activity. Age of consent laws that may impose higher ages for same-sex sexual activity Laws regarding donation of blood by men who have sex with men Laws concerning access to sex reassignment surgery and hormone replacement therapy Legal recognition and accommodation of reassigned gender Notably, 25 countries, all of which being developed democracies or developing democracies, recognized same-sex marriage as of 2018. By contrast, ten countries or jurisdictions, all of which are Islamic and ruled by Sharia, were imposing the death penalty for homosexuality. In 2011, the United Nations Human Rights Council passed its first resolution recognizing LGBT rights, following which the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights issued a report documenting violations of the rights of LGBT people, including hate crimes, criminalization of homosexual activity, and discrimination. Following the issuance of the report, the United Nations urged all countries which had not yet done so to enact laws protecting basic LGBT rights. History of LGBT-related laws Ancient Celts According to Aristotle, although most belligerent nations were strongly influenced by their women. The Celts were unusual because their men openly preferred male lovers. Politics 21269b. H. D. Rankin in Celts and the Classical World notes that Athenaeus echoes this comment 603a, and so does Ammianus 30.9. It seems to be the general opinion of antiquity. In Book 13 of his Dipnosophists, the Roman Greek rhetorician and grammarian Athenaeus, repeating assertions made by Diodorus Siculus in the 1st century BC Bibliotheca Historica 532, wrote that Celtic women were beautiful but that the men preferred to sleep together. Diodorus went further, stating that, "...the young men will offer themselves to strangers and are insulted if the offer is refused." Rankin argues that the ultimate source of these assertions is likely to be Poseidonus and speculates that these authors may be recording some kind of bonding ritual which requires abstinence from women at certain times. <laughs> Ancient India Throughout Hindu and Vedic texts there are many descriptions of saints, demigods, and even the Supreme Lord transcending gender norms and manifesting multiple combinations of sex and gender. There are several instances in ancient Indian epic poetry of same-sex depictions and unions by gods and goddesses. There are several stories depicting love between those of the same sex, especially among kings and queens. Kama Sutra, the ancient Indian treatise on love talks about feelings for same sexes. Transsexuals are also venerated e.g. Lord Vishnu as Mahini and Lord Shiva as Ardhanarishwara which means half-woman. <laughs> Ancient West Asia <laughs> <laughs> Ancient Israel the ancient law of Moses the Torah forbids men lying with men intercourse in Leviticus chapter 18 and gives a story of attempted homosexual rape in Genesis in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities being soon destroyed after that. The death penalty was prescribed. In Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5, cross-dressing is condemned as being abominable. 
Topic: <inaudible> Ancient Persia. In Persia, homosexuality and homoerotic expressions were tolerated in numerous public places, from monasteries and seminaries to taverns, military camps, bathhouses, and coffee houses. In the early Safavid era (1501–1723), male houses of prostitution (amrad kane) were legally recognized and paid taxes. Persian poets, such as Sadi d. 1291, Hafiz d. 1389, and Jamie d. 1492, wrote poems replete with homoerotic allusions. The two most commonly documented forms were commercial sex with transgender young males or males enacting transgender roles exemplified by the Kochiks and Sufi spiritual practices in which the practitioner admired the form of a beautiful boy in order to enter ecstatic states and glimpse the beauty of God. Assyria In Assyrian society, sex crimes were punished identically whether they were homosexual or heterosexual. An individual faced no punishment for penetrating someone of equal social class, a cult prostitute, or with someone whose gender roles were not considered solidly masculine. Such sexual relations were even seen as good fortune, with an Akkadian tablet, the Summa Alu, reading. If a man copulates with his equal from the rear, he becomes the leader among his peers and brothers." However, homosexual relationships with fellow soldiers, slaves, royal attendants, or those where a social better was submissive or penetrated, were treated as bad omens. Middle Assyrian law codes dating 1075 BC has a particularly harsh law for homosexuality in the military, which reads, If a man have intercourse with his brother in arms, they shall turn him into a eunuch. A similar law code reads, If a seigneur lay with his neighbor, when they have prosecuted him and convicted him, they shall lie with him and turn him into a eunuch. This law code condemns a situation that involves homosexual rape. Any Assyrian male could visit a prostitute or lie with another male, just as long as false rumors or forced sex were not involved with another male. Ancient Rome The «conquest mentality» of the ancient Romans shaped Roman homosexual practices. In the Roman Republic, a citizen's political liberty was defined in part by the right to preserve his body from physical compulsion or use by others, for the male citizen to submit his body to the giving of pleasure was considered servile. As long as a man played the penetrative role, it was socially acceptable and considered natural for him to have same-sex relations, without a perceived loss of his masculinity or social standing. The bodies of citizen youths were strictly off limits, and the Lex Scantinia imposed penalties on those who committed a sex crime against a freeborn male minor. Acceptable same sex partners were males excluded from legal protections as citizens, slaves, male prostitutes, and the infames, entertainers, or others who might be technically free but whose lifestyle set them outside the law. Homosexual and heterosexual were thus not categories of Roman sexuality, and no words exist in Latin that would precisely translate these concepts. A male citizen who willingly performed oral sex or received anal sex was disparaged, but there is only limited evidence of legal penalties against these men, who were presumably homosexual in the modern sense. In courtroom and political rhetoric, charges of effeminacy and passive sexual behaviors were directed particularly at democratic. Politicians populares, such as Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, Roman law addressed the rape of a male citizen as early as the 2nd century BC, when a ruling was issued in a case that may have involved a man of same-sex orientation. It was ruled that even a man who was «disreputable and questionable» had the same right as other citizens not to have his body subjected to forced sex. A law probably dating to the dictatorship of Julius Caesar defined rape as forced sex against boy, woman, or anyone. The rapist was subject to execution, a rare penalty in Roman law. A male classified as infamous, such as a prostitute or actor, could not as a matter of law be raped, nor could a slave, who was legally classified as property, the slave's owner, however, could prosecute the rapist for property damage. In the Roman army of the Republic, sex among fellow soldiers violated the decorum against intercourse with citizens and was subject to harsh penalties, including death, as a violation of military discipline. The Greek historian Polybius 2nd century BC lists deserters, thieves, perjurers, and those who in youth have abused their persons 
as subject to the fustuarium, clubbing to death. Ancient sources are most concerned with the effects of sexual harassment by officers, but the young soldier who brought an accusation against his superior needed to show that he had not willingly taken the passive role or prostituted himself. Soldiers were free to have relations with their male slaves, the use of a fellow citizen soldier's body was prohibited, not homosexual behaviors per se. By the late Republic and throughout the Imperial period, there is increasing evidence that men whose lifestyle marked them as homosexual in the modern sense served openly, although Roman law did not recognize marriage between men, and in general Romans regarded marriage as a heterosexual union with the primary purpose of producing children. In the early imperial period, some male couples were celebrating traditional marriage rites. Juvenal remarks with disapproval that his friends often attended such ceremonies. The Emperor Nero had two marriages to men, once as the bride with a freedman Pythagoras and once as the groom. His consort Spurus appeared in public as Nero's wife wearing the regalia that was customary for the Roman empress. Apart from measures to protect the prerogatives of citizens, the prosecution of homosexuality as a general crime began in the 3rd century of the Christian era when male prostitution was banned by Philip the Arab. By the end of the 4th century, after the Roman Empire had come under Christian rule, passive homosexuality was punishable by burning. Death by sword was the punishment for a man coupling like a woman", under the Theodosian Code. Under Justinian, all same-sex acts, passive or active, no matter who the partners, were declared contrary to nature and punishable by death. <laughs> Congo E. E. Evans Pritchard recorded that in the past male Azande warriors in the northern Congo routinely took on young male lovers between the ages of 12 and 20, who helped with household tasks and participated in intercrural sex with their older husbands. The practice had died out by the early 20th century, after Europeans had gained control of African countries, but was recounted to Evans Pritchard by the elders to whom he spoke. Feudal Japan. In feudal Japan, homosexuality was recognized, between equals baidu, in terms of pederasty and in terms of prostitution. The younger partner in a pederastic relationship often was expected to make the first move, the opposite was true in ancient Greece. In religious circles, same-sex love spread to the warrior samurai class, where it was customary for a boy in the wakashu age category to undergo training in the martial arts by apprenticing to a more experienced adult man. The man was permitted, if the boy agreed, to take the boy as his lover until he came of age. This relationship, often formalized in a brotherhood contract, was expected to be exclusive, with both partners swearing to take no other male lovers. The samurai period was one in which homosexuality was seen as particularly positive. Later when Japanese society became pacified, the middle classes adopted many of the practices of the warrior class. Topic. Lesotho Anthropologists Stephen Murray and Will Roscoe reported that women in Lesotho engaged in socially sanctioned, long-term, erotic relationships, called Topic: Papua New Guinea In Papua New Guinea, same-sex relationships were an integral part of the culture of certain tribes until the middle of the last century. The Itoro and Marand Annam for example, even viewed heterosexuality as wasteful and celebrated homosexuality instead. They believed that in sharing semen, they are sharing their life force, yet women simply wasted this force any time they didn't get pregnant after sex. In many traditional Melanesian cultures a prepubertal boy would be paired with an older adolescent who would become his mentor and who would inseminate him orally, anally, or topically, depending on the tribe over a number of years in order for the younger to also reach puberty. <laughs> Global LGBT rights maps <laughs> Timeline Topic. LGBT related laws by country or territory Topic. Africa Topic. Americas Topic. Asia Topic. Europe 
Topic: Oceania. Topic: See also. Topic: Notes. Topic: References. Topic: External links. International Lesbian and Gay Association State Sponsored Homophobia Report 2015 edition Lesbian and Gay Rights in the World Map 2015 edition Gay, Lesbian and Bisexual Law at Curlie Amnesty International USA LGBT legal status around the world Interactive Map Gaylanet Laws Information by Country Human Rights Watch on LGBT Rights International Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission Resource links — for researching legal information International Commission of Jurists, Sexual Orientation, Gender Identity and Justice — a Comparative Law Casebook United Nations Human Rights Council — Discriminatory Laws and Practices and Acts of Violence Against Individuals Based on Their Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity — an Annual Report the United Nations, Living Free and Equal, What States Are Doing to Tackle Violence and Discrimination Against Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender and Intersex People, November 2016.